Good evening. I am Sister Catherine Ryan from Maryville Academy. This evening, our guest is Helene Bohopian from the Maryville Children's Healthcare Center. You are watching Maryville Cares. It's a live interactive show on CAN TV 21, and we are also streaming on cantv.org uh, uh, slash O-R-G. That's, uh, that's uh, cantv.org backslash uh, hotline. So uh, let me say that again just to make sure I do this correctly because I don't want it to confuse. We are watching Maryville Cares. It's a live interactive show on CAN TV, but we are also streaming online at cantv.org backslash hotline. Now the next 25 minutes, we want to talk with parents and family members about children, some very special children, who are sometimes referred to as medically fragile children. These are some of our very special children who have complex medical conditions and they really need special care, but care that you'll be able to provide with professional teaching, uh, that some very special care so that their health can be stable. Uh, and that's why we have Helene here with us tonight. Uh, I want to say that if anyone wants to call in, please call the number that's at the bottom of the screen. That number is 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. Now, I have to make our usual important disclaimer. We are not providing any medical advice this evening and we are not providing any legal advice. At the same time, I think you will find that this is a very educational conversation about our dear children, whom we some to refer, sometimes refer to as medically fragile. So, Helene, let's get right to that terminology. Who are we talking about with our special children? It can be a variety of um, age groups and conditions. Um, for example, um, our population of children who have been premature and might have complications from that. So it could be a baby uh, that um, leaves the neonatal unit but is on a ventilator or has a tracheostomy. Oh my, we're going to have to stop for those words if you don't mind. So could you tell us what is a ventilator? A ventilator is um, a, a device that will help the child breathe. The okay. child um, doesn't breathe adequately, adequately on their own, so um, they would be getting uh, maybe oxygen and then um, some breaths per minute for, from the ventilator. So, for example, some of the premature children that you're talking about, they have respiratory problems, maybe underdeveloped lungs, or what else would cause that? Yes, it's usually underdeveloped lungs, uh, fragile lungs, just from being born too early. Um, the good news is that it's a condition that usually can improve as the child gets older. Well, we want to give, we want to let our families know this good news because of course when they're going to be helping care for our children while they're in need of special care, it's important for the families to know they make a difference. Uh, our dear children will be able to progress because of that care. Now besides a ventilator, I think you mentioned a uh, tracheostomy? Yes. So the tracheostomy is placed in the throat area of the child and uh, the ventilator is connected to that tracheostomy in order to deliver the, the ventilation or the respiratory assistance that's needed. And what would cause that, the need for that kind of a treatment? Again, it's um, the inability of the child to really breathe adequately on their own. Um, it could be from underdeveloped lungs, but there's other conditions. Sometimes children are born with um, underdeveloped lungs, or they might have had uh, an incident at birth that they're not breathing adequately initially. But again, uh, sometimes these conditions can improve. For our families, I just want to share my layperson experience. When I see some of our dear uh, children at at our Children's Health Care Center, which Helene is our direct directs, uh, uh, I see they might be one year old and have this little tracheostomy, tracheotomy. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the equipment today is made 
to fit whatever the child's size is. Yes, that's true because we have children that are from birth up to 21 years old. So um, we have older kids who might have a tracheostomy also. They come in all different sizes, you know, depending on how large the child is or how small they are. Now, how do parents usually find out that their child has these special needs? Is it something they learn at the hospital? Well, they learn it at the hospital and they um, may be getting ready to go home but they need to learn how to take care of these medically complex children. So a tracheostomy, they know that, that not every child has that. And we expect a lot of parents. We expect them to learn how to do the care and um, hopefully get the child at home. Uh, but sometimes learning the care can take an extended period of time for a person that is a lay person and not a medical person. So, Helene, you know, a little later in the program, I want you to describe for our families who are listening uh, our Children's Health Care Center and the kind of services that we and other agencies provide children. But picking up right now on what you're saying, some parents do learn this while the child's in the hospital? Well, they start learning it in the hospital, but sometimes the hospital will recommend that um, they need further training or sometimes the parents will say I'm not ready to take this child home yet I feel like I need more practice so, um, so that, where do they go? then they would be offered transitional care um, so a transitional care unit is a place where the child can go they may be getting discharged from, right from an ICU or a pediatric ICU um, and instead of going straight home, they'll go to a transitional care unit where there are uh, medical people, nurses, uh, taking care of the child on a 24-hour basis who are there to um, also teach the parents and assist them in teaching um, all of the needs of this child and get to the point where the parent feels confident in taking the child home. So you're actually talking now about our Children's Health Care Center and others. So I guess we should get into this part of the conversation. Uh, we at Merit Variable, we do offer some transitional care. And I believe in Cook County, the other agency that does that is Lurie Children's Hospital. Is that right? Yes, Almost Home Children is that facility. OK. And would you tell our families, what what is a transitional health care center? What should they expect when they walk in the door? Well, the transitional care center or unit is different than the hospital. Uh, one of the big differences is that at the hospital they have a medical equipment. A lot of times it's built into the wall, the oxygen is there, but when they go home they're going to actually have say tanks of oxygen maybe or um, a different type of oxygen equipment that they haven't even seen in the hospital. So the good thing about the transitional care unit is that they will have their own ventilator if they're on a ventilator assigned to them and then they'll learn how to use that piece of equipment at the transitional care unit. Um, and the same thing with like the oxygen equipment or they may have a feeding tube so they'll have the um, feeding tube pump that would be assigned to them for home use. So parents can learn how to operate a feeding tube? Yes, the, we, um, we teach the parents how to actually mix the formula that they may be getting, how to um, use the piece of equipment that will pump the um, formula in. A lot of times they'll be giving the child either a continuous formula or they may be giving a feeding every few hours. So we teach them how to use that whole piece of equipment and also how to um, use the gastrostomy tube, which is the most common way that you'll feed a child through a tube it's, it goes, is a tube that goes right into their stomach. That's uh, placed by the doctor and uh, the child has that all the time? Yes. And then the parents learn how to operate it? Yes. And uh, when we're serving children uh, at either of these two uh, transitional homes that we've just talked about. And by the way, those are the two transitional programs in Cook County. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So we want uh, our viewers to know that there are two, and if they need one, they could go to either one. 
uh, what's really important is that you know that the resources are there to be of assistance. Uh, but uh, what are the kinds of care that are given in the transitional program in addition to what you've just described? Well, in addition to assisting parents in learning the child's care, which is a big undertaking in itself, um, other things we offer um, a sleeping room for the parent to stay overnight um, so that they can spend an extended period of time. In fact, we require the parent to stay for a 24-hour period of time so that we both know that they can do the total care of the child for a 24-hour period. And we usually work up to that point. Um, other things that we offer are to help them get all of their services established. So these children, because they're medically complex, they might have uh, several doctors that are seeing them. For example, the child on a ventilator will have probably a pulmonologist, and that's a specific doctor, pediatric pulmonologist, who um, will deal with, you know, children who have breathing problems. Um, they might, if they have the tracheostomy, they'll have an ear, nose, and throat specialist who will follow them for that. The gastrostomy tube that's placed into their stomach, usually they have a gastro... Uh, a gastrointestinal um, expert or pedi pediatric expert to manage that. And of course then we have to line up just a regular pediatrician for, for that child to make sure they get immunizations like every other child does. So we'll help them organize those kind of services. The other things we'll help them organize um, are things like their therapy. So sometimes these children need extra therapy like physical therapy or occupational therapy or um, speech therapy. Those are three examples and um, they may be going to different facilities to get that or with children under three years old we can arrange for them to have those services at their home but we'll get those things started in the transitional care unit and have them meet those same people that will be following them to the home to provide that. So there are a lot of kinds of care that we want to make sure parents know are available and uh, how to access that kind of care and either of the transitional, both of the transitional programs will help parents to make these connections that you've just described. Yes. Now I want to ask you about, I'm still staying with the little ones at the moment although I'm going to ask you in a few moments about our older children who are in need of these kinds of services. But when parents have their uh, dear children who are in need of uh, some special care, their complex uh, medical situations, would those also include chronic diseases? Yes. Uh, a lot of the children who um, have complex medical problems will have a chronic disease that will um, affect them for their maybe their whole lifespan, although medic medicine changes all the time. but. Um, it may be something that's ongoing, so we teach the parents how to, to deal with that ongoing problem. What would be some examples of those kinds of chronic uh, diseases? It may be um, um, a degenerative muscular disease that would maybe require the child to have a ventilator for the rest of their life. Um, or it could be um, a disease that um, a short gut syndrome is is one of a type of child that we've had in our transitional care unit where they may have a um, feeding tube or an ileostomy or um, a central line which is um, for IV fluids at home. So that child wouldn't be taking any food by mouth? Um, some of them do and some of them don't but usually they require supplemental feedings through through gastrostomy tube and they may require what we call TPN and that's IV nutrition. So we would teach parents how to do that at home as well. Now you're, you're mentioning some pretty um, um, daunting kinds of medical conditions, Celine, but each time you're saying you can show the par teach the parents, show the parents how to take care of their child so they can have their child at home. Yes, and I think there's two important um, things to consider here is that we don't expect parents to go home without resources. Some of these children um, will, through the state, will get nursing hours awarded to them. So the other thing that we do is we help them obtain nurses that go into the home. 
um, because if the parent has to work, they have to have somebody to help take care of that child. So they may have nurses in the home taking care of the child during the day while they're at work. Or in the case of a child who's ventilated, the parents have to sleep at some time, so they may need a nurse for that overnight shift so that they can get sleep in order to go to a job or in order to take care of the child during the day. So they can have nursing hours um, from as little as a few hours a day up to about 16 or 19 hours a day, depending on how much help they would need. Well, that's very important. Um, I would like to pause just for a moment. I want to remind our viewers that uh, you are watching Maryville Cares. This is live on Can TV 21 and also it's on cantv.org backslash hotline. So in this evening we're discussing uh, children who are with special medical conditions sometimes referred to as medically fragile children uh, and I, we want to talk about uh, who our children are, these special children, but we also want to emphasize as I think Helene is doing that there is help to, for parents and families to care for these dear children and uh, education available to show people like me, family members who are not in the healthcare profession, how to take care of the child safely at home. So Helena, I want to come back to this. You mentioned therapies. Now, you said physical therapy, you mentioned occupational therapy. Before we get to speech therapy, I'd like you to talk about physical therapy and occupational therapy. How do those help our children who are medically fragile? It, it, can, it can help greatly. Um, it's so important so um, if the child has a problem with no mobility or even a child who's been very sick may be behind in their developmental milestones, like it might be a baby who's not crawling yet, but that doesn't mean that they won't be able to crawl. Sometimes they just need help in, in those skills. So um, physical therapy can help them, and sometimes children need help sitting up. I've seen children who came to us who were only laying there, but once they hit physical therapy, we got them sitting up, and then they were crawling, and then eventually walking with, with help with therapy. And not only, you know, do they get therapy while they're there, but we'll have the parents participate in what can you do to help facilitate um, the child and the physical therapist and nurses will help them to do the exercises that they need to help the child improve in those skills too. So is the therapy helping develop the muscles for the it, child? Yes, it helps definitely develop the muscles and um, just mobility too. Now, uh, you also mentioned speech therapy. And <clears throat> I want to ask you about this because, as you mentioned, some children have feeding tubes, so they're not taking anything by mouth. How is speech therapy helpful? Well, the speech therapist will evaluate the child. And um, some children who haven't really eaten from a bottle before, um, all of a sudden, they don't want to put anything in their mouth. Mm -hmm. So it might help, help with the speech therapist. They um, will evaluate you know, different ways that we can start getting the child used to tasting things. They'll evaluate whether the child is ready to eat by their mouth if they haven't before um, and evaluate if they can swallow. Um, sometimes, the, you know, they'll recommend starting with like thicker baby foods and things like that instead of trying to give a baby a bottle because that's thinner liquid to make sure that we can get that suck and swallow redeveloped. And then um, they'll move on to to food and eventually with some of these children they won't have a, a feeding tube for their whole life. It just depends on their condition. So some of the children will grow out of uh, some of these medical conditions that you're talking about? Yes. Um, for example, um, preemies, babies who have been preemies, they might not be ready to eat when they're really small but they may um, be able to uh, progress from baby food and up to solid foods at a later date and not need a feeding tube the rest of their life. Um, or some children who have had um, um, respiratory problems at birth, um, they may get weaned off the ventilator, meaning that um, we'll have children, sometimes they're off the ventilator for one hour, then two hours, and it takes maybe months or even years to get them off the ventilator, but that there's hope that eventually they may be able to be weaned off of that depending on their condition. So you're really uh, offering our families the information that 
uh, first of all, they can learn how to care for their children with these special conditions. And uh, maybe second of all, uh, that there is help for them in the community with some of these nursing hours or therapy hours that you've talked about. And thirdly, also importantly, some children, after a period of time with this good care, will grow out of the condition. Would those all be fair summaries? I think they're fair, and I think the most important message to give parents is that um, that there's hope and that also parents can learn how to take care of these medically complex children at home. And that what I've seen is that the parent initially, people are very nervous, but it's their child. And when you, when you start taking care of your own child, what I've found is that these parents will go home and when I see them the next time they come back, they're an expert in taking mm -hmm. care of this child. And that they know every little cue and everything about their child. So what I always tell other nurses and, and um, healthcare workers is that listen to what the parents have to say about this child they've had at home because they become the expert on that child's care. Good advice. Now, Helene, I want to bring in one other group of uh, medically fragile young people. I know in our healthcare center and I know in the other healthcare centers, uh, many of the children have uh, diseases or conditions that came from birth or uh, from some kind of uh, physical situation. But we also have some of the young people who are gunshot victims. Uh, you've cared for some, have you not, in the transitional center? Yes, we've had quite a few um, children um, who were products of gun violence in the city who... Meaning they were victims of gun violence. Yes. 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 And so, um, and the ones that we've cared for um, were wheelchair dependent after their injury. So they come to the transitional care unit to learn how to um, adapt to life with their condition of maybe being in a wheelchair and, you know, we've had all different levels of um, mobility that they'll have afterwards, but then we teach them how to do their own care because most of them are around older kids or teenage teenagers and um, how to um, care for themselves and then how to survive and go on with, with their life. And so some of the same kinds of care that you've described uh, as well as some of the same therapies would be important for these young people as well. Yes, very important. Oh. And you know these children are again they are fragile too after the initial um, injury and so we do um, things like physical therapy and occupational therapy, and we teach them how to care for themselves. And usually we can get them to the point where they know all of their care and they want to want to get back out into society. Uh, more good news Yes, uh, that, that they can uh, grow from this. I want to uh, give our viewers the numbers for the Maryville Center for Children. This is the location of our Children's Health Care Center. And there is uh, on the screen the address and also a phone number. and uh, Perhaps uh, you'd rather find it online, which can be done if you go to www.maryvilleacademy.org. So uh, hope, hopefully that's helpful to viewers if you need to find it. Now, we've been talking about transitional care. Um, one more topic before we close, and that's respite care. Yes, and respite care, what does that mean? That means that um, we offer this to parents at our facility as well, that if they've had a child who's medically complex at home, um, they can drop their child off from a period of time between one and two weeks, and we will care for that child. Um, a lot of times parents maybe have planned a vacation and um, they feel like the child can't really participate in that vacation or they have other children that they need to um, take on a trip you know maybe for school or something like that so we will we will care for that medically complex child for that period of time to give the, the family sometimes just needs a rest so I think Helene we the message we want to leave with our families tonight is that uh, they are not alone uh, we have uh, programs and people caring people who will help teach how to care for the children. There are supportive services that can be brought into the home and our children can grow and, and get better, however that works out for them. So thank you, Helene, and 
to our viewers, thank you for watching and participating in this evening's show. Uh, I am Sister Catherine Ryan from Maryville Academy. This evening, our guest has been Helene, and uh, I think that it's important for us to say thank you to Helene, uh, who has these many years of nursing care and now directs our Maryville Children's Health Care Center. If you need more information, you can reach us at the website that you just saw on the screen. But thank you very much for this evening.